might be old lens, but I got you, dog. I got you today. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Six Pack Abs. I am your host, Johnny Catanzano. In today's video, we are going to discuss three squat variations focusing on hypertrophy, so building muscle that you probably should be doing. All right, so first let's talk a little bit about the barbell squat. Barbell squat is typically touted as pound for pound, the best muscle building leg exercise you pretty much can do, right? I mean, to build your quads, your glutes, even your hamstrings, it's kind of like the staple of leg day. I mean, I see everybody go into the gym now. It's actually more popular now with social media, which is great because most people before would skip leg day, but now we're not, so a lot of people are turning to the barbell squat. The thing is, a lot of people turn immediately to the barbell squat really without any good experience or any good maybe coaching or teaching and getting started on how to actually properly barbell squat. So that's the first reason why I'm gonna recommend a couple of these squat variations is it's first, it's it could be a great way to actually learn how to properly squat and then develop up into a barbell squat. The second reason is these exercises are actually very good at hypertrophy or achieving hypertrophy. So when we exercise, we're typically gonna be training for a certain focus, either endurance or we're looking for hypertrophy, which is muscle building, or we're looking for strength or power or speed. So there's a lot of different specificities you can gear your training towards. Now, another great reason why these exercises are very good to mix into your leg regimen is that you may be either dealing with current injuries or maybe previous injuries. Maybe you, you've had a blown out ACL in high school football, or maybe you busted your ankle playing you know, high school basketball or whatever. And now it's, it's let's say, difficult for you to barbell squat. So this is another, uh, these exercises are gonna be a really good alternative for you in that scenario. So if you find yourself at home sitting and like, well, that's kind of me, this could be for you. Or additionally, the other group of people who just don't have great squat mobility. For some people, for some portion of the population, the way that their body's built, the way that the, their bone length is, the way that their legs sit in their hips, it's a very good exercise for them. And anatomically, it's very, advantageous now for the other part of the population or another large portion where maybe your hip hips sit a little bit, bit wider maybe you have really long femurs maybe you maybe you're really tall with a long torso with really short legs maybe the barbell squat just really isn't designed for your body so that's why i wanted to show you guys these couple variations so don't think you have to barbell squat when you go into the gym don't get me wrong guys in the comments i'm not telling you to not barbell squat I'm just saying there's a million ways to go about this. And these three squat, vari squat variations are very good at not only achieving hypertrophy, so building muscle, but also teaching you how to properly squat. So I'm really excited to share these with you. Okay, so first squat variation that I wanna break down is the goblet squat, okay? The goblet squat to me is one of the best ways to teach somebody how to squat. Rather than trying to stick a barbell on their back, which does require some degree of shoulder, chest, upper back mobility, why don't we just stick a weight here where they can hold it and teach them the proper way to get into the hip hinge to allow their knees to go over their toes and allow their quads to stretch properly and allowing them to get as much depth as possible um, based on their, their ability. So that's my opinion on the goblet squat. It's fantastic teaching tool, but it's also good to continue to do it. It's a great way to continue to build muscle other than a barbell squat. The downfall with the goblet squat is it's hard to get heavy loading. Once you're starting to hold like an 80 or 100 pound dumbbell, it gets a little bit difficult. You know, you, you typically exhaust your upper body before your lower body gets. It's a great thing to interlace into your leg day training and regimen. Now, let me break it down on how to do it the right way. So when you see people do a goblet squat, you can either use a dumbbell or a, or a kettlebell. A lot of people you'll see the first thing they do is butt back, okay? So that's, it's very, very common. And even on a barbell squat, you'll see that a lot. So they just have this tremendous amount of hip hinge and they're just, their chest dips down, okay? And some of them get low. Some people only come out to here and some people really stick their knees way out wide, okay? Those are a couple things that we don't wanna do. There's no reason to go in such a huge hinge. When that happens, a lot of this tension is then gonna go to your lower back. 
The other thing that happens when you do that is you prevent your knees from being able to stretch down over your toes. There's a common myth out there that people think that you shouldn't allow your knee to go over your toe, but that doesn't make any sense and that is very untrue. So with the goblet squat, you wanna hold it kind of nice here, tight under your chest. What we're gonna do is when we go down, we want our knees to go straight over our toes. Okay, so for me, one thing I do wanna show you here is I do like to put some plates down. You don't have to do this. Um, I like 10 pound plates, something flat you can put right under your heel. That gives you a little bit more mobility, especially with your ankles and calves. Some of us have, when we go down, 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 those heels start to lift off the ground. So we don't want that. We wanna make sure and keep those heels and toes planted. So we're gonna slowly lower down, and as we lower down, we're gonna allow those knees to go over the toes, okay? And we're gonna try to keep this chest upright. So don't let that dumbbell dip. And we're just gonna sit down as far as we can comfortably and come back up, okay? So that's your goblet squat. You should be able to get some pretty good depth. If you don't have the mobility, just go as deep as you can comfortably. So again, make sure both your heel and your toe are planted. We don't wanna go up and we don't wanna be back. We want them both planted. We're gonna go kinda of down, straight down, chest is up, and we're gonna sit. And you should be able to eventually get to where you can sit here comfortably. Like I can put this weight here and allow my elbows to hit my legs and push duck them out. For the return, you're just gonna simply try to essentially push your knees back over your ankles the other way. You don't really wanna push outwards. I know that's a common cue in squatting is to really like push outwards like that. You don't want that much external rotation in your femurs while you do that. You do wanna keep them out. You don't want your knees to go in as you come up, but you want them to pretty much go on the same path that they went down. So if they went straight down over the toes, they're gonna kinda come back straight up over the toes, okay? So that's your goblet squat. The, the uh, Adding the plates is a great way to allow for more depth. You should be getting down to where your hip crease is getting to the level of your knee or below it, okay? So if you're not there, work on stretching, working on mobility, work on very light squats, get down, get into the position, get comfortable with it. You all should be able to squat down to a certain degree unless you have an injury or some sort of mobility issue, okay? Next squat variation I wanted to discuss is another one of my favorites, so that's our, what's called split squat. Now the split squat uh, for me is a great alternative to the barbell squat. For those of you that really do have either hip pain or hip impingements or mobility issues, let's say you're getting down into squat, your quads are hurting, your knees are hurting. I think the split squat for me, in my experiences in my, with my coaching and training and training myself, it's a great alternative. It's very good at achieving hypertrophy. It's really good at stretching the muscles, especially the quadriceps. Now, when we do the split squat, you can do it with dumbbells or barbells. It's kind of up to you. Again, you always revert back to what's your experience level, what's your mobility like. Can you hold a barbell up here? Can you keep your chest upright when you do it? So let's just say we're gonna use a barbell. Now, with the split squat, You'll see a lot of people say, yeah, we'll do a split squat. And they're kind of like this. And they do their split squat. And you see how my weight is really, really far forward and my chest is forward. Okay, so with, this is more of a lunge, okay? The reason a split squat is called a split squat is because you're splitting the load between both legs. So ideally, you wanna have this back leg planted as well, okay? So your weight, you wanna be evenly distributed and you wanna keep this chest up as you go down. Okay, the other thing you wanna do is make sure this hip here is engaged. Keep that glute fired. Don't let your hips dip back like this. Okay, so we're gonna keep that hip engaged. We're gonna keep our hips straight. We don't wanna go down at a twist or at an angle. We're gonna keep this back foot planted, drive forward. And as you go down, you're gonna feel it in this front quad, but you're also gonna feel a nice stretch in that rear quad, in that stabilizer. Okay, what's happened there? is when you're in this position, you keep your weight evenly distributed and you go down, you're also stretching this quadricep and hip flexor. So if you sit a lot, if you have hip issues, hip tightness, quad tightness, any of that, this will help loosen you up, especially if you do it slow and controlled. We're not gonna go bobbing up and down here. We're not riding the horse, okay? We just wanna go nice all the way down so your range of motion allows, you wanna to try to get this knee to your hip level, stretch, you'll feel, ooh, you'll feel it here, and then you're gonna go up, and just repeat. Barbell, dumbbell, pick your poison, great exercise, heart rate goes way up, 
hypertrophy achieved. It's a really good leg builder. All right, now, last but not least, squat variation that everybody should be at least working into their regimen or is a great alternative to try uh, is the sumo squat, okay? Sumo squat for me is a great way for us to really stretch our adductors and our hips. So what a sumo squat is, it's essentially gonna be similar to the barbell squat we're talking about, but you can do it any way you want. Goblet, barbell, Smith machine, whatever. The key here is, with what I'm recommending, is taking this nice and wide stance. It will make it more hip dominant, okay? So when you do this, you're gonna need to be able to hinge to some degree, but again, you don't want the chest to dip all the way down. Tension goes to the lumbar lower back. We do need the hip hinge. Let your hips really open up, chest stays up, and we're gonna get down again till we try to keep these knees at this hip level or just below. And we wanna keep the toes over the knees. We don't want them to duck in, and we really don't wanna push them way, 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 way out. Okay, so you can use barbell, dumbbell. One of my favorites that is actually very easy to do is you can put two boxes down or two plates and stand on it. This will give you some more clearance so you can go lower. It's to just take a dumbbell here, it's upside down goblet essentially, or a pendulum, and you're gonna do your goblet squats this way. So this is a great way to develop the mobility. So maybe start here, that would be your regression. You know, start with a 20 pound dumbbell, work your way up to like 75 or 90 pound dumbbell. Then maybe you move up to the barbell or maybe move to the Smith machine, then the barbell. It's a great way to loosen up those hips, those adductors, that gives a lot of width. Like when you see somebody with good big legs, they've got good adductors, that's all that is right there. So you get that from really stretching and contracting your quads, your adductors and your hip complex. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this content. I know I talked a lot, but guys, there's really no other way to explain it. In health and fitness, to really apply something effectively to your training, you need to understand the concept. So that's why I really, for you guys, I try to take the time to explain things thoroughly. So I'm sorry if these videos tend to be five, 10, 15 minutes, but honestly, I'm giving you a lot of information condensed down into just 10 or 15 minutes. So I hope you enjoyed. If you have questions, please comment below. Um, make sure and click the, the notification bell so that way you're notified anytime we drop some new content. My name is Coach Johnny. Please contact us at any time. Hope you have a great day.